When I was a kid, my family and most of my extended family called me Junior. Now, I'm sure you can observe that I am a female. And the name Junior actually goes to the male child who's named after his father. Neither of those things are true about me. But that was my nickname. But that's because that was my dad's nickname. And because I looked like him, acted like him, and was probably always glued to his side, they started to call me Junior. Well, truthfully, I thought it was the coolest thing ever. I mean, my dad was that guy. When he walked into the room, everybody wanted to be his friend. He was funny, he was business savvy, he always had a joke, he was smart, he was directional. I wanted to be like my dad. I was the epitome of daddy's little girl. So when they called me Junior, I laughed, it made me feel warm on the inside, I smiled. It was a compliment. Until one day, it wasn't. I don't know if it was teenage angst or something, but one day that nickname, instead of making me feel warm and, and smile and feel proud, it made me roll my eyes. I was over it. I didn't wanna be like him anymore. I mean, I loved my dad, but I wanted my own identity, but it was too late. That name had already stuck. And years later, even to this day, when I go back and I'm around my family, they still say, oh, it's Junior, look at Jada. And I'm thinking, I'm in my 40s, really. But it won't shake. That's what they've called me since I was a little girl. And I wonder if there is an identity, uh, a nickname maybe, for you that you kind of feel stuck to. It can happen. Uh, who we were growing up as kids or even before we came to know the Lord at various points in our lives, our spiritual and emotional journey, sometimes we can earn identities and earn nicknames that we can outgrow. Have you ever gone back to maybe a high school reunion or reconnected with old friends and they call you that nickname that your new friends don't know about? Uh, have you ever been around family and they start to tell all the stories about how you used to be when you were a kid and you kind of want to keep those things under wraps? Sometimes I think even as we find God when we're on that journey to finding Jesus, we go back to our old friends or our old community or maybe even our family that's not saved yet. And we try to show them this new joy we have and all they do is look at us and say, I knew you back when. Uh, please save all the new life for me. I know who you really are. It can feel like bondage, really. You can't shake this old reputation, this old identity. And I wanna encourage you today that even if you feel stuck or defined by your old identity, your old reputation, there is hope for you. God can re-identify you. Well, speaking of identity issues, today we're gonna to be looking at Rahab. And this was a woman that even if you don't know a lot about the Bible, everybody knows Rahab was the prostitute. I mean, my gosh, she's probably like, can you know my whole story first? It's just a thing that stuck with her. And, and she really didn't have a whole lot of say in that identity. She was a part of a culture, the land of Canaan, the Canaanites. This was a highly sexualized, highly pagan, anti-God culture. This sounds familiar. This is like all the cultures of the Bible that were not for God, were opposed to God. But the Canaanites took this sexuality thing to a whole nother level. They thought sex was a part of everything. They used sex and sexual activity and sexual symbols to determine weather, <laughs> to guide their agriculture, to measure success, to give them strategic battle plans and war and peace. It was a strange kind of thing. I mean, they even had worship ceremonies that involved sexual acts. I am not making this stuff up. And so you can imagine that a girl growing up in this culture had a certain identity. There were things that were just normal for her. So it's really not that big of a stretch that Rahab would choose to be a prostitute. We're not gonna whitewash this and say she was an innkeeper. <laughs> Rahab was a prostitute, but it made sense in her cultural context. As a matter of fact, in the Canaanite culture, there were even certain prostitutes that were deemed as sacred, that certain priests and certain high-ranking religious officials would have sex with sacred prostitutes asking for blessings from these strange gods. So it's not a stretch that Rahab would choose this identity. You, you may feel like that you grew up in a culture that really didn't give you a lot of choice. You, you just became a part of what your culture said was normal. And that happens for a lot of us. We can grow up with certain family values and ideals. We can grow up in certain parts of the country or certain parts of the world. We have religious frames of reference that really identify us before we even choose our own identity. 
And so a lot of times you can feel trapped. You can feel stuck by that. You may have felt like Rahab, you inherited some beliefs that were opposed to God. You may feel like your life was so dysfunctional, so moving away from God that you don't have any hope to be re-identified by Him. And I want to tell you that there is hope. Spoiler alert, Rahab was not a church girl. You don't have to be the girl that grew up in Sunday school and on the front row and at every vacation Bible school for God to use you greatly. Just because your life may have been described as dysfunctional, just welcome to normal. That's everybody's life. That doesn't mean you're doomed. That just means God has a unique destiny plan for you. So let me bring this home a little bit. You might be wondering, okay, Jada, does this really apply to me? I'm telling you, if you are wondering, can God use the single mom who is just trying to make ends meet? Can God use the stepmom who's just trying to win the affections of her stepchildren and her husband? Can God use the poor girl who was raised by uneducated parents and really feels lost sometimes in this world? Can God use the girl who just got the degree? You're not even sure what it's for. Can God use your corporate ambitions that you all of a sudden feel like don't make sense anymore? The answer is yes, yes, yes. It does not matter the path you've taken up until now. Let God take over. 